Whether you're looking to replace the stock on a Model 700 or a clone or custom that you've already got, uh, just looking for a stock replacement, or you're looking to start gathering components for a custom build, you're going to want to pay attention to this video. Alright, today we're going to look at a stock from Axial Precision. Now Axial Precision is relatively new to the rifle game. Uh, they they build custom rifles uh, from scratch with their own action and they're building their now building their own stocks. They're offering the stocks as a component. You can buy from them right on their website. Um, MSRP $699 and that's a little bit maybe steeper than a lot of the other uh, carbon fiber stocks out there for, for hunting purposes but I think that uh, when we're done talking about this you'll see that it's worth it. Um, it's carbon fiber shell, it's got a Packmire decelerator pad, then you can get it with a rail on it. Uh, it does have aluminum pillars and it's really set up so that they'll come where you'll bed pillar bed the the action or your rifle into the stock. Um, like I said, carbon fiber shell. It does have, they, they can adjust the fill weight anywhere from around 20 ounces to 32 ounces plus. Um, this particular one is right at 32 ounces. This one down here is about 26 ounces. Um, so uh, I have spent uh, about three or four months shooting this on this Christensen Ridgeline in a 7 millimeter rim mag and then I've spent a little bit of time uh, with this one right here on my custom uh, 30 nozzler Bighorn. So uh, we'll here in a second I'll set this rifle down and we'll take a look at the specs. Um, we'll go over the things uh, that I really like about it. Um, well, we've heard it, you've heard it uh, talked about before. The negative comb is a nice plus. It doesn't uh, pound the recoil uh, from the stock into your cheek. I do like the decelerator pads much more than the limb savers. They just look cleaner. Uh, the performance is the same for me. And I really like the fact that the heel is actually above, uh, it's probably right in line with the bore center actually, but uh, if it's above the stock line here. And then the drop at the toe is very little. And uh, we'll show you those with the tape measure and talk about them a little bit more here in a second. Okay, I've got it zoomed in here, so I think that you're going to be able to see uh, what I'm talking about here. Now, to me, the, the drop at the comb's not really that big of a uh, measurement in the grand scheme of things, but um, just looking at here, you're about five-eighths of an inch at the drop at the comb. Now, the drop at the heel is uh, actually, it's negative. So it's actually a plus number. It's not a drop. It actually goes above. Um, now I know this isn't the most scientific way to measure this. It's not actually measuring it from the bore center, which is what we care about the most. But the stock is right in line with other stocks that uh, I've used with carbon fiber barrels um, or even steel barrels. So this will just be a real good uh, rough estimate or comparison to other stocks for you. Uh, again, not measured from the actual bore center. But you can see what I'm talking about. Now, again, around 5 eighths drop at the comb, and then it's not a drop, it's actually a plus number at the, the heel right here. Um, what is actually important between those two numbers to me is the fact that it's negative comb. So it, it goes from a negative to a positive at the heel. What that actually allows, and I'm sure you've heard it before, is uh, as the gun recoils, that the rifle recoils, it actually pulls the comb away from your cheek so you don't get smacked in the face causing uh, discomfort or causing you to jerk the, the trigger or whatever. Um, another thing that I think is often overlooked is this uh, this measurement right here, drop at the toe. And there's no free lunch with this number, but uh, we'll talk about that real quick. It's five and a half inches to the drop at the, the toe there. Um, now that plays into how the rifle recoils. The, the, the more this is hanging down from the center of the bore, 
the more it's going to want to induce a uh, muzzle flip. And uh, that all has to do with really the point of impact here, the point of uh, interface with your shoulder and being consistent with that. But the less, the less overall here displacement you have in this from the, the, the bore center of the rifle, the less muzzle flip it's going to want to uh, induce. Now one negative thing about this is that when there's less here, um, and I'll, I'll put the other rifle back up here and we'll kind of look at it, then uh, you don't have as much adjustment, fast adjustment for vertical on long shots from field positions. Uh, to me, it's a the trade-off's well worth it. Um, I would much rather have a stock setup like this than uh, one with a, a lot of uh, drop at the heel or drop at the toe. So I'll take this any day. All right, so I got this rifle back up here for you. This is what I'm talking about. The when you have less drop at the toe here, it makes it so when this chain from here to here doesn't change a whole lot. Um, and this is pretty much, relatively speaking, pretty standard on most rifles. But when it doesn't have a lot of drop at the toe, then you can't get this adjustment for for vertical quickly. But like I said, the trade-off is that the rifle actually recoils straight back instead of wanting to point up, um, which is a huge deal for me. I do a lot of uh, hunting and shooting by myself, and I'd like to spot my shots. And even if you have a hunting partner, I do feel it's still better to see where your own shots are going and be able to make quick adjustments. Um, you can use, sometimes use crosshairs to actually see where the bullet was versus uh, where the hit was and just actually put the uh, where the bullet hit on the crosshair uh, with most crosshairs today and just pull it down and pull the trigger uh, cycle the bolt pull the trigger again and uh, you're good to go um, especially with wind calls now the other the other piece that's very important to the user input to a stock is the grip uh, this one is very very good at doing everything. Um, the hand position is very good. It, it has enough of a shelf over here on the side for the thumb to, to not cause you to want to wrap it over which can cause torque and, and affect accuracy. Now it's not the number one best input here in the vertical in the grip area for shooting prone. Uh, I do prefer a little more vertical grip uh, for strictly shooting prone, but when you take everything into a hunting rifle into consideration uh, from uh, shooting prone to, to shooting offhand and everything, this is a, one of the best, if not the best compromises uh, that, I've ever, that I've ever shot. Now having said that I dislike the, the lack of vertical grip or that it's not as vertical as I would prefer, um, this still causes the the least amount of displacement on target when you pull the trigger of any stock that I've shot. So I don't know that I really care um, if you made me pick a stock that had a vertical grip but it caused a lot of muzzle flip and I couldn't spot my shots uh, versus this stock. I would take this stock every day. So uh, I think as I shoot it more and more and get accustomed to this grip it will be an absolute non-issue. Like I said the, the function definitely overrides the the comfort level if I guess if you will for me and I'll I, like I said I would take a, something that that uh, I can have such a small ver or a crosshair displacement on firing um, over a little bit of what I would consider a comfort in a more vertical grip.
All right, so we've looked at the specs on this uh, stock and kind of looked at the the angles and and the drops uh, and, and how it's situated to uh, your body. You know, the drop at the comb, the drop at the heel, and those kinds of things. Now, uh, I've been shooting this uh, stock, actually two different stocks, but I've been shooting on two different rifles for a while now. Um, on a Christensen Ridgeline in seven millimeter rim mag uh, with the radial port still on it, and then this custom 30 nozzler that I built with Bighorn, and it's got the Area 419 brake on it. Um, I, you saw the video of, of me pulling the trigger. I, I, it's kind of hard, I think, to see how a rifle does recoil uh, with a video filming you, but it that is, this is the stock that has given me the least amount of displacement from the crosshairs on target of any stock I've ever fired. Um, now I, I didn't set up uh, a target square with with the amount of displacement uh, I'm seeing the crosshairs on the target move but it, it's very obvious after shooting it enough times that it almost always is within a minute or so on target um, very few cases does it go over and that's that's typically because I messed up the, the trigger pull or whatever, but um, it, you have to attribute that to the, the design here, how the negative comb comes up, and not only that, but the way the butt pad, the recoil pad is in relationship to vertical or in relationship to how it sits on your shoulder, and then also this angle here on the bottom of the stock uh, being so, it, it doesn't drop, so it has very little drop at the heel or the toe. Um, it is not necessarily the most comfortable grip for me shooting prone right in here. Um, it does have a nice thumb shelf to keep you from adding torque uh, when you pull the trigger. Uh, there are more vertical grip stocks out there that I do find to be a little more comfortable when I'm, when I'm shooting prone, but the results I think speak for themselves. The, this like I said, has very, very little displacement on target. So it makes spotting your shots very easy. Now there are other methods for, for obtaining those same results, such as using uh, brakes like the Christensen Slayer that has uh, tunable ports on top. In the past I've used those on rifles and they, they do do the job. Um, so it, this isn't it, the only way to do it it's with a stock, but uh, I have to say this is one of my favorite overall stocks I've ever fired. Like I said, if you were doing 100% prone, there are a couple out there that I would uh, consider to be on par with this. Um, but overall, this does a really good job at everything. It's it, it's good for offhand shots. It's It's got a good mix between a vertical and what I would call a classical grip right in, right in here in the pistol grip area. Um, I think for anyone um, looking for an awesome stock that has a great ability to do everything very well, this is something you should consider. Again, uh, axial precision, um, take a look at it. If you have any questions, we'll have a, a link to the forum where a thread will be started where you can answer those questions. Um, Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't signed up for a membership on the longrangeonly.com forum. Go ahead and go over there. Free to do. It's quick, simple, a lot of good uh, knowledge. Uh, so go check it out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.